in this video we'd like to discuss another surgical procedure that is quite common next to hysterectomy. So hysterectomy is the removal of the uterus. Today we discuss salpingectomy which is the removal of fallopian tubes. Now, here at the hospital our philosophy with uh, uh, reproductive organ removal is still the same even for fallopian tubes. Now if you've watched our hysterectomy video you you would know that uh, we only remove organs when there are two specific scenarios uh, that is affecting the patient. First of all, there are underlying cancerous roots, so there's some form of cancer spreading within the organ or nearby organs. Then we go for hysterectomy or the, the affected organ removal. The next one is a life-threatening condition where the patient's life will be saved if the organ is removed under these two specific scenarios. Then only we uh, will recommend this uh, surgical procedure because usually a removal of an organ, especially for a female reproductive system, can be very devastating, destructive, and bring some long-term side effects that many doctors don't really address it, and many patients only realize it after losing the organ. So in this video, we both educate you and also make you make the most informed decision when you go for such procedures. So salpingectomy is simply the removal of fallopian tubes. Now under what scenarios do we want to remove a fallopian tube? Now in other hospitals, there are several scenarios that they will just recommend you fallopian tube removal. First of all, ectopic pregnancy, because it can cause tubal rupture. Patient's life is under threatened. So this is uh, in fact acceptable. Secondly is blocked fallopian tubes or dysfunctional fallopian tube. For example, the fallopian tube is swollen, the fallopian tube has some form of closure. Recommending fallopian tube removal is actually not in line with our philosophy because usually for fallopian tube dysfunctions, fallopian tube disorders, blocking or rupture or some form of closure, usually it can be treated. We don't really need to remove it because uh, removing it, not only do we lose the organ, we drastically reduce uh, fertility and other complications as well. So for uh, infection or tubal blockage, we don't recommend salpingectomy in anti hospital. So when your doctor recommends it, you might need to do an informed decision and discuss it more. Uh, next up is that uh, now some doctors will also recommend endometrial endometriosis affected fallopian tube, they will also recommend salpingectomy. So for this scenario at anti-hospital, we also refrain from doing salpingectomy because it is completely treatable as well using uh, 3D laparoscopic surgery. We can actually remove this endometrial uh, tissue and also uh, do other forms of uh, medications and also procedures to prevent this uh, endometriosis from returning but in many hospitals conventional treatment is that once they detect uh, any form of endometriosis within the fallopian tube they will also recommend removal so although there are specific scenarios that you need organ removal especially for fallopian tube but at anti-hospital again i'd like to uh, reiterate we only remove during two specific scenarios cancerous and life-threatening if there is in fact a detected some form of cancer within the ovaries, the uterus, it might affect the fallopian tube, might be spreading over there, then this situation necessitates an organ removal of the fallopian tube. And then for example, ectopic pregnancy, mother's life is under danger because if tubal ruptures might cause massive internal bleeding. This also uh, requires salpingectomy, but for other situations, you need to do careful assessment, careful studying of the patient to actually recommend salpingectomy, something that's far uh, drastic and then it's sometimes not necessary because if you remove a fallopian tube and, and in certain procedures where both fallopian tubes need removal, the patient no longer has the ability to get pregnant naturally. And then furthermore, there may be some complications as well. For example, there might be some infection of the sur uh, surgical site there might be some abnormal fluids or pus coming from the surgical side, some swelling, some pain that may only arise after the procedure. Now, this also depends on the experience of the surgeon and also the technique of the 
the conducting of the surgery, all of these play a role. The moral of the story is that we want you to educate yourself on the specific scenarios that you undergo for organ removal, especially for reproductive organs. In our hysterectomy video, it was quite a controversial topic as many people were disagreeing with us as we only remove your uterus under these two specific scenarios. For, for your fallopian tubes and your ovaries, we also follow the same two principles. As for any other factors, for example, endometriosis, infections, some dysfunction, blockage, adenomyosis, all of these require specific treatment and not removal. So get in touch with us uh, for more information on how we actually treat your underlying disease and retain the organ and also retain its function because we, at the end of the day we want you to keep your organs and then also allow you to have a natural pregnancy avoiding IVF and other forms of assistive reproductive technology because at the end of the day a natural pregnancy is uh, achievable for you and especially a full-term one so leave me some comment down below and also look forward to the next one